so let's get ready to code something. Um, in this video, we gonna uh, try to solve a problem, a little program um, that includes a lot of event-driven programming. And we're going to program a lot asynchronously. Um, and um, during a couple of videos we, we will look at the, the different uh, possibilities to solve asynchronously programming uh, in the Node.js. We're gonna look at the callback pattern, promises, even generators, uh, and I'm gonna do a video about uh, event emitters in the end. Well, okay, I have figured out a little problem or a little program that we're gonna write in these videos. Uh, the program isn't the smartest or the best or the most useful program ever written, but it's it's good enough for our purposes and how to show how to to using these uh, programming models. Um, the program is gonna do, um, you see I have written down some points here. Uh, the first it should do, it's, uh, it should get a URL from the user. We're gonna look how, how do we start a node program, how can we let the users uh, put in some parameters to the program uh, before it starts and, and stuff like that. Okay, so we got a URL, we, we're gonna use that URL and uh, fetch the HTML page. We are gonna do that through the request package. As we looked in previous videos, we have installed it with the npm installed. Um, so we fetch that page, get the data. When we get the data, we analyze the content and get the title. We're gonna use Sherio to um, pull out the title of the HTML uh, document. Uh, when this is done, we're gonna write down the title to a file in the file system. Uh, then we're gonna use this title to do a search on Google. Well, not very <laughs> useful, but hey. When we got the search result, which of course is on HTML page, we're gonna analyze the page, uh, get all the headlines for the uh, every Google page gives us 10 search results. So we get the headlines of every search result and we're gonna save those headlines in an other file. And as you see, every URL, every file write and stuff like that, that's an IO operation and that's, we don't wanna do the, this in a synchronous way that's gonna block the main thread. So we wanna do this asynchronously and we're gonna program that way uh, to, to solve this problem. And the first way we're gonna do this is looking at the callback pattern. Uh, I assume all of you have programmed JavaScript before and you, you know about it, uh, but uh, we're gonna look at the callback pattern and how to implement it in Node. Yes. So here uh, we can remove the dev dependency because I uninstalled them. Uh, we have our dependency. I already installed Sherio and request, and we're gonna use these uh, packages uh, later in our code. But let's start. Okay. Here's my application folder, but I don't have any JavaScript file or, or something that we can let that we can let the node run. So we have to first of all create a JavaScript file. And uh, if you remember, I said uh, the main file will be called app.js. So we better name it like that. Okay, we have an empty, uh, I you strict. Uh, you see my code standard. I've taken it from previous courses, and I have no, I haven't. Oh, and you see when I save this, I get a red uh, row in a atom, uh, missing semicolon. Yeah, that's of course. Um, but they also say string must use single quote. Um, 
In previous courses you had uh, you have been given JS hint files uh, where we define the code standard and we defined it as always use oh uh, always use uh, double quotes uh, so in this case it's the, the default standard in atom and many javascript standard use only single quotes so let's copy over the the stuff from an other project so there i copied in the gss file and the gs hint file uh, to follow my uh, own um, code standard so i save and now the double quotes are okay um, yeah, yeah, just do a console.log uh, Hello world Just to see how to get this application running Okay, we have the app files uh, The app.js uh, How do I start the node application? Well, open up your um, terminal window and run node and then the name of the file and we see it uh, outputs uh, hello world so we have connection and it will be in the app we will be coding i remove the console log and save okay so let's start coding and the first problem we're gonna Solve is to get uh, the URL from the user. Um, I was thinking since we just uh, coding for the console um, or terminal uh, in this program, uh, we should let the user. Uh, let's clear here. Uh, we call the program with node app.js, and I want the user to. Uh, submit the, the URL when we start the program and we in this case we wanna know that the user wanna look up the github.com uh, URL uh, and how do we do that um, well let's start uh, create a variable uh, in the node you can get uh, the process arguments um, through using uh, process dot rgv and this is a um, kind of an array that uh, the two first values I think are uh, reserved uh, every time we, we call it uh, but the third and later on values uh, we can check for and that's what the user is writing after the node app.js uh, space and then the command they on. So we can get the URL by uh, adding uh, checking for the second index the third value in this uh, uh, array. Um, well, if the user doesn't provide anything, we um, should have a default value. Uh, let's add, uh, uh, like this. So, no, something wrong. Uh, so we are not using the URL variable. Uh, okay, so we we solve the first problem, um, and we got the user have the ability to add a URL, and we 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 get it in the program, so we can can use what the user is is um, providing. Of course we should have some validation here that it's a correct uh, URL and stuff like that but um, uh, I mean ignoring that at the moment. Um, the next problem 
uh, is to okay get this URL and fetch it. And how do we use? How do we do that? Remember, we have before installed a couple of uh, packages. Uh, we have the Sherio and the request uh, package. So we're gonna use the request package, uh, and I'm gonna just um, paste in code uh, at this moment. Um, if I'm gonna start to write every code line, uh, this movie will be very very long. So I'm gonna start to paste in some code, uh, and um, I'm gonna start to paste in the code for fetching a URL through the request object. Uh, well, the first thing we must do is of course we must do a require on that uh, package. So we create a variable uh, called request and do require. Uh, and all of you have done your own modules in previous courses and then you have used a required and then you have specified the relative path to that uh, JS file. In this case, we d did do uh, we have done a uh, in npm install, so we have it in the node modules uh, directory, right? So the only thing we have to do is just call the package name like this, and it will fetch from the node modules uh, directory, and it will uh, find the request uh, module and all its dependencies. Um, if uh, node doesn't find and the require doesn't find um, this uh, request, it's gonna look in the global node module directory. We looked at it in a previous video. Uh, so we can uh, install it globally and we don't have to install it in the local node module uh, directory. But I, um, in uh, at most time you do it in the application, of course, uh, because if you do using uh, global installations, um, people that clone down your project can't use them because they don't have the same packages installed as global. Okay, so we have the request and then I paste in some code. Uh, I'm using this request object. Uh, I'm using the URL uh, like this the URL that the user provides us, or we take the default. Uh, the request is, the request package is um, using the callback pattern. Uh, you can read it up in the um, documentation till the request package. Um, so it's take the URL, it's take an callback. This is a function, an anonymous function. First parameter is always the error. Then we get a response, which gives us the HTTP response and data uh, metadata to that. And then we get the HTML, uh, the page we are requesting in the URL. Uh, and the way you, you do it when you, you're using this callback uh, uh, pattern is you first check if error exists Okay, then we know we don't get the page and we uh, handle the error. In this um, example, I just console log it uh, and I'm always uh, try to return from the anonymous function as fast as possible uh, because we will leave that function and, uh, and the main thread, uh, the event loop can take another event or return to the main thread. So even if someone ha have told you not to use many return statements in a function, in this case it's a good thing. So check for the error, do you error handling and return. So we don't have to write an else or a statement or something like that. So we just return when we got the error. Um, I also check for the response and the status code. If it isn't a 200, 200 OK means that we get the page. If it is a 400 or 404 or something, we are also treat it as an error. I console log it just like this and also return from the anonymous function that we're in. Uh, but 
if we came to row 16 we assume that we get the HTML and we can console log it. Let's save that and let's fire it up uh, node app and I'm providing the github.com URL uh, and you see it right it spit out I probably is the start page for github so it seems to work yes and uh, okay so we solved the first problem uh, and remember we're using the callback pattern here because the request uh, is is using it so our uh, callback function we define always the error and in this case a response and this uh, and our HTML. We check for the error and return as fast as we can in the code. Um, when we start looking at the problem we have we see that we have a fetch of a, of a page here and we do it when we try to search Google here and we can maybe do it in another time later on. So of course we maybe wanna do our own module that's just concentrating on fetching uh, uh, this page. We don't want to have that, that code in the app.js because uh, the file here may be, be uh, very big at the end of the program. Uh, so can we in some way write our own um, module. Oh, of course you have done it before in previous courses. Uh, in this case I have uh, I have provided, I have created a, a folder called lib uh, and there I put a file page loader like my own module uh, and I have some code in it and as you see it's mainly the same the only thing I do doesn't do console log here uh, I do return HTML uh, and I uh, remember to do a module exports and I'm uh, exporting uh, an object which have fetch which is a function which take a URL um, so of course I can I can write my own module and then I have to rewrite my app GS this code I have in the module already so I don't need it I don't need a request because <laughs> we only use request in the module um, but I need to load that module uh, page loader require and this module is my own module I don't have done any npm install or something so I have to add the relative path page loader like that uh, that looks fine for now the URL can be left there and I will check some code uh, I will paste in some code uh, we have the page loader uh, it had a function fetch we can send a URL and uh, the URL come in the request though does it work and uh, the function anonymous function and we return the HTML should work yeah or I try to console log the HTML uh, variable in the app file after the page load fetch is is done uh, so we run this and uh, do a clear and we run the same but you see we get undefined and then it took a little while and then the program exited so what's happened here well it's asynchronous uh, programming we call the fetch the fetch start doing this call to the request but then it's gonna return here and if we don't have any return statement javascript always return undefined that's why we get the uh, undefined here because this code is synchronous 
uh, although we treated it is like this. So it's just um, do the stuff, it will return undefined, and we uh, we uh, console log undefined. So this is not the way to do it. We have to provide to our own module a callback, a function which we can invoke when we are ready. So uh, let's uh, rewrite the function and add a callback. And the callback is a function that we will call fetch with a URL and a function. Just the same as we do in the request. Um, and we use this callback to um, call the user of, of this fetch whenever we need it. We will do it when we get an error of some kind and we will do it when we get a result, when something went in, uh, the way we expected. Uh, so instead of these return messages, we should have return, uh, but we're using the callback. And the first parameter in the callback function should always be the error. So we're just passing along the error and lets the user of this module take care of it. Uh, in this case, we create a new own error. like this and when it went all right we use the callback and since a callback always should have the error as the first parameter we provide null and then provide the HTML the result that, that we wanted. So let's get back to the app.js and we have to add a function And this function takes two parameters. The first one, always the error, callback error like that, and null when it's uh, okay. Uh, so we call that error. And the second time we can call uh, data or something. It's the result. So this is an anonymous function and just as um, we did checking in the, our own module, we do the same when we use it like this. Uh, if error, but since we are in the main uh, JavaScript file, we can just console log it. Uh, ah, let's do like that. Uh, we can do a return. Uh, in this case, the error will be, yeah, it could be uh, this error or this error that we just printed out in this case. Uh, otherwise, we can console log the data. Uh, return. We can skip that line. Uh, and we can skip that thing too. Uh, so in this case we have made an own module that's supporting the callback, callback pattern. Uh, in this case it's using uh, other module that's supporting that callback, uh, callback um, pattern. Uh, and we let the user who use our fetch method or fetch function uh, add their own callback and we provide as first parameter always the error if any kind otherwise null as error and then the data and that's just what we are collecting here error then data so let's try it And now you see it's working, we get the data. Fine. So let's move on. Uh, we have fetched the page. Ne next uh, problem is to analyze the content and then get the title. 
Uh, to do this, we use um, Sherio, um, which is the other package we installed in an earlier video. Uh, Sherio, we can use it as writing um, selectors to get exactly what we want in the HTML. If you look at the HTML we got back, we uh, maybe in this case we're just interesting in the title and somewhere here, somewhere uh, in this head there will be a title, I assume, there. We're just interested in this, so we can use Sherio to just uh, pick the stuff we're interested in. Uh, okay, so let's use Sherio. Uh, I will uh, do, 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 do. I will copy some code. We do it first in this uh, function. Okay, Sherio require save it in a uh, in a variable. Um, then we are using it like this. Uh, we're using the Sherio. It has a function called load, which can load the uh, HTML in this case. Uh, we're writing a, a selection of any kind. We will select the title tag. Uh, we get the text from the title tag and I also do a trim on that because it will include uh, break uh, line breaks. Uh, so let's try and see what this will do. And as you will see, this is just a synchronous, uh, nothing, nothing uh, asynchronous, no IO operation or stuff like that. And you see, instead of the whole uh, document, we just uh, get the title of the document. Okay, we move along. We solve this. Uh, next thing we should do is write the title down in a file. Uh, to do this, we must use the file system. This is something we can do in the Node platform. You can't use this in the browser or something because the browser can't save any files to the user's file system. But since we are on a server, we can use it. Uh, and, and the way to do it, it is using the node.js core module, which is called FS, file system. Uh, and we don't have to do an install or something, it's a core uh, module, so we can just create a variable, require and get fs, fs for file system. Uh, and that's all we need. We don't need to do an install, we don't need to have it in node module, because this is a core, uh, core library. So we're gonna write down the title so I'm gonna uh, create a variable like this uh, 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 uh. we have the title and if we now we can do a quick search and if we check up the uh, node.js uh, documentation we will find um, the table of contents for this file system module and we will find um, we're gonna use the function append file and we can read about it here and see an example of how, it, how it's work. Um, they are using um, arrow function which, which is a new thing uh, in the new ECMAScript specification uh, you can use arrow function and that stuff if you want. Uh, Node supports it. Uh, I'm gonna go with the old style for now uh, because I'm used to it mainly. Uh, but uh, if you want to use um, things like arrow functions and feel free to do it. Uh, Node has some support of the new specification. 
Uh, but I'm gonna do this my way and I'm gonna take some code and I'm gonna put it here and just let me, I missed something. Uh, and this is the way we use the file system module and the function uh, append file. Take a, a path to the file. This is a relative path. So I'm going to create a, a file called dumptitle.txt uh, in the same directory as this app.js. Uh, it's going to write down the title. And I added some uh, row breaks and some um some lines uh, like that so this is a a string as second parameter and then it's going to take a callback course file system writing to the file system is slow it's an io operation so node wants it to do it asynchronously so we need to use the same callback pattern in this case so i had to add this callback uh, in this case. Uh, in this case the append file is just doing something and the only thing we're getting back is the error and we check if there are, are any error then return console um, error writing file or something uh, otherwise we just can console log uh, written to file or something. So you see, we are in an anonymous function, callback function. We're doing a new call and we're doing a new function that is doing uh, the stuff when we have written to the file. So we, so just like every other asynchronous programming stuff, it's just starting to write the file. Let the uh, internal node system take care of this and the code will continue here but when it's written and it's done we get this callback and we can uh, check for error or do tell the user that uh, the file has been written so let's try this code uh, and we got written to file, it has fetched the pages, getting the title and it has uh, written a file and we will find dump title here and we will have the title and it's written to the text file. So if we continue here we see that we have done this and now we should do the same thing again, we should search the google.com, we will do a new page uh, fetch, we will analyze the results, we will get the headlines and we will write the headlines to another file. Okay, so I think you get the idea of this callback programming style. Uh, we haven't um, solved uh, every problem yet and I'm gonna pause this um, movie and uh, paste in a solution that uh, does all this, this thing uh, in a um, callback pattern. Uh, I'm gonna break out uh, the um, uh, the use of Sherio in an own module and, and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm, I'm pausing this video and I'm uh, gonna paste in a complete solution for doing uh, solving this problem. Uh, okay, so we are back and you see the code has gone deeper. Um, I had uh, create our own module called HTML analyzer, uh, which has, I require here and um, save us HTML variable. Um, it exposes two functions, get title and get headlines. Get title is just the Sherry load stuff that gets the title. Uh, headlines is a bit different cause we load the HTML uh, that we get as a parameter. Uh, we write a selection uh, 
um, looking for the ID with that name and the each three tags. Uh, then we get the headlines and we can use it in Shareo like a uh, for loop uh, calling each um, and we can push it in an array and uh, the text in an array and I return that array with all the headlines. Uh, this is nothing asynchronous, uh, this is just uh, Synchrone, so we don't have to do any callbacks and stuff like this in this module. Uh, going back to the app GS, we remember this code, uh, and now I'm the, uh, I'm using the HTML uh, function get title to get the title. Uh, I'm using the file system append file uh, uh, like before. Uh, when I ha have been writing to the file, I fetch the Google search URL at the title. Uh, when we get the callback from page load, just like we did uh, the first time, um, we check for error. Uh, we have the HTML as the data in the callback, uh, we get the headlines, uh, we open up a new file called dumpheaders.txt um, using the array we get headlines.join uh, with um, new line string uh, and so on and we write the file and the file is written. Of course this and this, it's no need that we write the file before we load, uh, before we fetch the page. Uh, we can do this parallel, but in this case, I wanna just show how the co code looks like when we start to implement the callback pattern. We have to wait for the callback here, and then the code is there. Uh, and then we do a new callback and we get that code there and then we do a new callback and we get that call there and then we do a new callback and we get that call there and you see the code is getting very very hard to read hard to understand if say we should have 20 different uh, tasks we were waiting for and a callback for each we were getting very deep and this is what this is what uh, we used to call callback hell we get callback after callback after callback and the code is very very hard to to um, read to understand it's very very hard to uh, know what error what what is error in this context we got an error there and we got an error there maybe we should start naming them error 2, error 3 and so on and so on. It's not the best way to do it. Many many libraries and packages use the callback pattern and what you should know about it is uh, how you implement it yourself when you have a callback. Always send back the error first and then a second parameter the data. Uh, or I should say the last parameter, you can put options and stuff uh, in between here. Um, and the same thing when you implement your own uh, callbacks, that it's always the error first, check for the error, uh, if you found it, return as fast as possible, so we don't let the code continue down in, the, in this road, because if we get the error at the first, uh, place just do the return and so but as you can see this is not a, a, a really good solution in the next video we will uh, refactor this code and try to write it as promises instead of using the callback pattern uh, so beware understand callbacks how you do it how the signatures for the anonymous function are uh, and know how to use it, but be aware of callback hell when we start to get callback after callback after callback and a new code just grow. Uh... So, we stop this video and we 
get back and try to fix this code with promises.